Now, the reputation of the United States Supreme Court has been called once more into question after one of its justices was heard endorsing the notion that the country should seek to return to a place of godliness. Justice Samuel Alito, a Republican appointee to the court's nine-member bench, was secretly recorded at an event in Washington. Well, his comments have fueled an intense debate about whether the court, with its new Republican-appointed majority, is at risk of becoming politicised. From Washington, here's Simon Marks. The year was 1962. The US Supreme Court had just delivered a landmark opinion and President John F. Kennedy's reaction to it was featured on America's Universal Newsreel. The first question at President Kennedy's news conference deals with the Supreme Court decision that a New York school prayer violates constitutional separation of church and state. The president's statement is in the nature of an effort to calm the storm. The uh, Supreme Court uh, has made its judgment. A good many people uh, obviously will disagree with it. Others will agree with it. It is uh, important for us, if we're going to maintain our constitutional principle, that we uh, support uh, Supreme Court decisions, even when we may not agree with them. For decades, that was the way things were in Washington. Successive presidents and sessions of Congress tiptoeing carefully to avoid any criticism of the US Supreme Court, the third co-equal branch of the American government as laid out in the country's constitution. How things have changed. The Supreme Court has never been as out of kilter as it is today. President Biden in Los Angeles last weekend warning of the dangers that he says Donald Trump created when, as president, he had the opportunity to nominate three Republicans to the court's nine-member bench. That resulted in a conservative majority of justices on the court and the president says his rival this November must not get the chance to nominate any more. The next president is likely to have two new Supreme Court nominees. The idea that if he's re-elected, he's going to appoint two more fine flags upside down is really, I, I, I really mean it. That reference to flags flying upside down goes to the heart of the current scandal buffeting the court. Within the last few weeks, it has emerged that in January of 2021, the American flag flew upside down outside the home of Samuel Alito, one of six Republican-nominated Supreme Court justices. The banner was a widely used symbol of Donald Trump's Stop the Steal campaign, falsely alleging the 2020 presidential election was rigged. Alito says the flag had nothing to do with him and was related to a dispute between his wife and some of their neighbours in a suburb just outside Washington. But his wife, Martha Ann Alito, says she wishes she could have gone further. I want a sacred heart of Jesus flag because I have to look across the lagoon at the pride flag for the next month. Exactly. And and he's like, oh, please don't put up a flag. I said, I won't do it because I'm deferring to you. But when you are free of this nonsense, I'm putting it up and I'm going to send them a message every day. That secretly recorded audio was gathered by a left-wing activist at a Supreme Court Historical Association dinner last month month in Washington. And as you heard on the tape, the activist Lauren Windsor egged the Alitos on in an effort to encourage them to think that she was just like them, a Christian conservative. She managed to make Justice Alito sufficiently comfortable that he embraced the view that America, in which the separation between church and state is constitutionally guaranteed, should become a more godly nation. Coexistence with those who disagree he called difficult. One side or the other is going to win. There can be a way of living together peacefully, but it's difficult, you know, because there are differences on fundamental things that really can't be compromised. Those comments infuriated Democrats at the White House and on Capitol Hill. Justice Alito should not sit on any of these cases involving Donald Trump. He ought to recuse himself. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, one of many prominent Democrats who argue that Alito must now step down from at least two cases currently before the court that could directly impact the outcome of this year's presidential election. One of them will determine whether Trump enjoys blanket immunity from prosecution for his actions when he was in office. The other will decide whether participants in the January the 6th uprising three years ago by Trump supporters were properly prosecuted for obstructing an official proceeding in Congress. Here is the challenge to Chief Justice Roberts. The United States Supreme Court's credibility is plummeting and it is due to 
the Supreme Court's own self-inflicted wounds. Those wounds are also attributed to another Supreme Court Justice, Clarence Thomas. It's been revealed that he and his wife received gifts worth millions of dollars from a Republican mega donor, including 38 vacations, 26 flights on private jets, VIP passes to major sporting events, and even payments that stopped Justice Thomas from having to sell his mother's home. Ginny Thomas, his wife, attended Donald Trump's rally on January the 6th that led to the attack on Capitol Hill and has publicly maintained that President Biden stole the 2020 election. The Democrats' leader in the House of Representatives is Congressman Hakeem Jeffries of New York. The problem that we confront is that the Supreme Court has chosen to conduct itself as if the judiciary is above the law. Republicans argue that is nonsense and the activities particularly of the wives of Supreme Court justices do not necessarily have any bearing on their husband's interpretation of the American Constitution. I think the Supreme Court justices in general have done a good job. I wish we'd do a better job of protecting them. Conservative talk show host Clay Travis is one of many on the right defending Justice Alito's secretly recorded comments and pointing to the court's opinion only last week that kept the abortion pill mefe Stone on the market as a fresh indication that the justices are not avowedly political. It's not like he said, oh yeah, I'm on the Supreme Court and my belief is that the Ten Commandments is the only law that exists anywhere in the world. I mean, if anything, I thought that the decision that came down right afterwards, 9-0 on uh, the morning after pill, was pretty straightforward answer that we don't live uh, in a Christian theocracy and that everything is still subject to the rule of law. But the court's own goals are on the mind of Chief Justice John John Roberts, himself a Republican appointee. Late last year, he implemented a new ethics code. Critics on the left say it has no enforcement mechanism and is insufficient, while those on the right accuse him of unnecessarily caving in to pressure. The Chief Justice himself was caught on tape at last month's dinner, along with the Alitos, but was notably far more restrained when activist Lauren Windsor tried to get him to embrace the concept of America becoming a God-fearing Christian nation. I don't know that we live in a Christian nation. I know a lot of Jewish and Muslim friends who would say maybe not. Uh, And it's not our job to do that. But the Chief Justice knows the institution on which he and his eight colleagues serve for life is now in the political crosshairs like never before. The era of hallowed reverence and respect for the Supreme Court has passed, and the justices are now being scrutinised not just for their rulings, but for what they say and do in their lives as private citizens as well. For Monocle Radio, I'm Simon Marks in Washington.